Hi, it's Reverend Bryony here. Um, I'm just going to take you through um, some various tools I've learned about using uh, during lockdown. Um, I'm going to try and give it you in the simplest possible terms. I've got 15 minutes to do it, so not loads of time, but hopefully you'll go away with at least one idea that you can try and implement where you are. So, um, first things first, what sort of hardware do you need? What actual things do you need to buy? You don't really need to buy loads of stuff. Um, but obviously if you want to do video and stuff you need some form of webcam really um, if you want to do kind of online worship and that type of thing so a webcam you might have one already built into your laptop most laptops come with them automatically built in these days but you can buy them separately um, reasonably cheaply so you probably need a webcam um, also it's worth buying a decent microphone because your built-in microphone into your laptop they tend not to be brilliant quality the microphone in your mobile phone however is quite a good microphone so if you can't afford to buy a USB microphone you might want to do most of your audio recordings in particular using your mobile phone instead um, but my microphone that I've got that I'm using to do this on um, is an audio technica one I think it was about £70 it wasn't massively cheap but it has been really useful and I've used it loads it's really good for like zoom calls and that kind of thing as well um, and you might well want to buy some form of stand for your um, laptop or your mobile phone, like a little tripod or something like that. Again, you can buy those quite cheaply because lots of people make TikTok videos and YouTube videos and stuff at home. So you can get tripods quite simply and easily. Ones with cameras with um, lights on them as well. I haven't got one of those, as you can tell, because I'm in the dark right here. <laughs> but you can get ones with, with lights so that you look a bit more, they're a bit more flattering on the face. So they're just some of the bits of hardware you might want to think about getting. So what sort of software do you need to get? Well, you definitely need some kind of video editing software. Now, if you've got a Mac, you'll automatically have iMovie on your Mac. That's pretty good. Um, if you've got a, um, a PC, um, you may have Windows Movie Maker built in, uh, which is OK. It's a little bit clunky, but it's an all right video editing tool. Um, if you want something slightly better than that, you can get download for free a thing called OpenShot and that's quite a good um, free video editing bit of software. So OpenShot's a good free one. You need some form of audio recording software. Now I've been using Audacity for years. It's absolutely free. It's a brilliant piece of free software. Uh, lots of people use it. Um, so Audacity. So I'd download that if I were you. Um, and the last thing that I've been using that I've literally only learned in the last sort of two months how to use, but I'm using it every week now for all my online stuff, is something called OBS Studio, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. So it's basically free software for broadcasting. So um, that's a free download and again is a brilliant bit of kit and you can do really professional looking um, stuff with it so it's really good so I'd recommend that so they're the bits of software that you probably want to have before you get going with any of these things I'm going to be talking about um, online tools as well um, something I used right at the beginning of lockdown which I've kind of stopped using now because I've discovered OBS um, but another tool that's quite useful is something called screencast Omatic which is totally free, which will actually make a video recording of anything that you've got on your computer screen. So you can do like instructional videos and things like that with it. Um, as I say, I'm using OBS now instead of Screencast-O-Matic, but if you, if you just want to get started with something, I would probably start there. If you haven't used any of this stuff before, that one's actually really easy to use and really good. Um, another online one that somebody drew my attention to is something called Orphonic.com. And that will do post-production on any audio recordings you have. And I'm going to be talking shortly about how you do dial a sermon. Um, so how you can kind of upload a sermon online and then people can ring a phone number to listen to that sermon. And I've discovered, of course, when you listen to things over the telephone, it needs to be quite loud and quite good quality audio. So, put, so uploading your MP3 to Orphonic, they will do post-production on it for you. Um, and make sure all the levelling's right and they'll kind of cut out any background noise and that sort of thing. So it's really good. And you can do that not just with MP3s, but you can do it with videos as well. So sometimes you might want to put through your entire church service that you've, that you've prepared on a Sunday so that all the audio is kind of equalised across the whole production. So orphonic.com is really good. 
Um, another free tool um, is a podcasting app called Anchor. Uh, so it's an app that you can download onto your iPhone or your um, Android phone. Um, and it's also web based as well. Um, and you can make really professional sounding podcasts. And what's really good about that is that it has some a music library that's free. So you can put like funky little background music um, on, on your podcast. So it sounds like sounds like a posh podcast and it's really easy to use and you can do it all via your mobile phone so that's one if you haven't got a very good laptop and you want to get into this sort of stuff I would start with Anchor and that's where I started right back at the beginning of lockdown that was the first thing I did was a daily prayer podcast using Anchor so that's an, another tool and finally um, if you want to set up dial a sermon I'm sure there are other ways of doing it but I don't know what they are um, but I learned to set up um, my dial a sermon system using something called Twilio um, and and that does have a small cost attached to it. It cost me £20 to set up. I haven't had to top up my £20 yet. Um, it's been going strong so I think it will probably work out about £20 a year to run that system um, and there's information on how to set up Twilio um, on my blog and there's a link about that at the end. So they're the different tools that you might want to use. So just some simple ways to record and share audio. Simplest way, if you've got a mobile phone um, and many of you will be aware of, um, of WhatsApp. So um, you, can, you can use WhatsApp as, as a voice recorder on your, on your phone. Um, so a simple way to do it is you could set up a WhatsApp group for your church and you could record a sermon on WhatsApp and send it to them all. That would be really, really straightforward. So, that, but that would obviously only only reach those people that are in that group on WhatsApp. But that's the really simplest way to do it. You can also get people from your church to send recordings to you or videos to you via WhatsApp. Um, so you might say, you know, would you record some prayers for us for the service this week, and they can send them to you via WhatsApp. That's how I do my pre-recorded services. I get different people to do the Bible readings and the prayers and they usually send me the recordings via WhatsApp because if you look at the bottom of the screen there you'll see a little icon with a microphone on it. If you hold that down that will record your voice and then you can send it. Um, and then usually what I do is when the recording pings through to me on my on my mobile I email that recording to myself and then I can fiddle around with it and edit it and do what I want with it. Um, so WhatsApp's a great little tool, um, very straightforward way of doing some audio recordings. I've already mentioned the Anchor app, um, so you can record a podcast um, and I do a daily prayer podcast. Um, so I do morning prayer each day and I just record it uh, using Anchor and then just press publish on my phone and, and it's there done and dusted and you can actually edit edit what you've recorded on your phone. It's really easy to use app um, and it's absolutely brilliant. And the good thing about Anchor is over time, it will begin to publish your podcast. The more episodes you create, it will publish it to various different places online. So I just got a notification this week. I've been on it for three months, so quite a long time. Um, but I got a notification this week that it's now available on the Apple Podcasts app. It's also available on Spotify as well. So probably by the end of the year, it will be available on most of the main podcasting services. So that's really good. But you don't, that side of it doesn't really matter because you can just share the link to your your podcast on, on Facebook or on your church website. You can actually embed um, the podcast into your website. So it doesn't matter too much whether people access podcasts or not in your congregations many people probably aren't really aware what podcasts are but all a podcast is is a recording um an audio recording really it's a bit like radio but it's pre-recorded um so anchor is really excellent to use and it utilizes the very good built-in microphone in in your mobile phone so that's actually worth using um for recording my sermons weekly I use the free tool Audacity, which is some free software that I've got on my computer now. You can actually also use Audacity to record audio from the internet as well, which is kind of handy. Um, so that's quite a useful tool. So Audacity is really good for making recordings and you can edit the recording in Audacity. So you can cut out sort of if somebody coughs or something like that, you can cut out the cough um, just using the simple 
um, little scissors icon to cut out that part of the recording um, and it's a free tool and there are plenty of there's, there's quite good built-in help facility to teach you how to edit and all that sort of thing and there's plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do it as well so Audacity is brilliant for recording audio so I thought I would just show you a couple of things about how I do do these things I know people have been asking questions about how how do you set up dial a sermon systems um, so what I do uh, is I record the sermon using Audacity I add in a message at the beginning and the end for, for those listening on the phone. So at the beginning of the recording, I'll do a little thing saying, hello, you've reached the dial a sermon system from the parishes of Balbrook and Clown, just so that when the person rings through to the number, there might be an elderly person, they might think, have I got the right number? And they hear my voice and they know they've got through. Um, and, then the, and then I'll say, coming up is the sermon that was given this week. And I'll give the date and everything like that. Um, so I record all of that message and once I'm happy with with the whole message and that includes the sermon and everything um, I then on Audacity click export audio as mp3 so then I've got my mp3 then what I do is I upload that mp3 file to orphonic.com for audio post-production so that will just take away any background noise and hum um, and I usually choose the loudest setting on that um, the one that's been that's pointed at here on the screen um, that's for podcasts and mobile there's, there's a few higher than that that are louder than that I pick the absolute loudest one because that works really well over the phone so that's what I do next then once it's been through the orphonic thing you get an email telling you when your file's ready I download the file that's the final version of my mp3 for my dialer sermon and then I upload that to my website then I've got a WordPress website so you can see there's a screenshot here of uploading an audio file to my WordPress website if you don't have a website or your website doesn't do that kind of thing you can upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox or one of those kind of online storage places and just make the file public and that will work as well and then the final bit is to at add the link to the uploaded mp3 to my Twilio function now setting up Twilio it is a little bit tricky but um, Paul who created the very first guide which I used to set up my Twilio um, after lots of demand partly because I tweeted his article left right and centre um, he created a, a YouTube video that takes you through step by step how to do it so and once you've set it up all you need to do each week is, is log into Twilio, go to your function in Twilio um, and you'll see that there's a there's a link where it says play in brackets and I just change that to the correct link for this for the mp3 that I've just uploaded and that's everything you need to do um, and so you ring the dialer sermon number and you can listen to the sermon so that's how I do that and this is what I sent out to my elderly congregation um, in the post so they've got a little card they can stick on the fridge and they can just ring that number whenever they want to to listen to this week's sermon what about pre-recording well um, what I've been doing is I, d I do both a pre-recorded service on a Sunday uh, on YouTube and I do live a live service every Tuesday night on Facebook and I use OBS for both of those things so the first thing I do is I make a PowerPoint in portrait format so that the text goes up the side of the screen with my picture on the other side as you can see in the picture here um, so I make a PowerPoint in portrait format um, and then I set up OBS and you can either just live stream and t take the service as normal um, or you can just press record not bother with the live streaming bit just using it as a recorder and press record and that's what I'm doing to make this little film right now um, I find that it's best to record um, especially the pre-recorded service obviously um, I do that in chunks so I'll do my introduction and then I'll press stop on the record and it'll save what I've just recorded into my videos folder on my computer and it gives it a time and date on the recording that's the name of the recording is the date and time so you know which one it is and then I usually change the name of the recording to intro for Sunday 
and then 5th of July um, and save that in a, in a folder and then I'll do the next bit so I do it in little chunks for the Sunday service because it's a lot easier then to just drag and drop and pull in all the different parts of the service so that's what I do for the pre-recorded. For the live ones, uh, when you when you start live streaming, OBS will automatically start recording what's happening. Um, so that's really good. And I'm finding that on a Tuesday night, I take the service, I record it, uh, do it all live, work my way through the PowerPoint. Um, I do it all live, uh, streaming to Facebook. And at the end of the service, when I've stopped going live, I've then got the recording just saved in my folders of that whole service and I, I can almost immediately upload that recording um, to YouTube and I don't know why but the, it comes out as quite a small file so it doesn't take too long to upload that to YouTube um, probably takes half an hour or something to upload it to YouTube which isn't too bad at all so um, so that's what I do um, and that's partly so that people that don't have Facebook can still access the service via YouTube if they want to um, as well so um, so that's how I record my pre-record my live services another way of doing it and I know some quite a lot of people are using zoom for their church services I tend to use zoom just for like after service coffee and chat I haven't used it for, for actual services but I know a lot of other people do do that um, and what you can do is you can record, you can press record in Zoom and then at the very end of your phone call, once you've all hung up, um, it will save that recording in your Zoom folder on your computer. Um, and then you can edit the video afterwards. And that's what I did the other week. Uh, we had a guy called Malcolm, he's in the picture here. Um, he's been on placement with us and it was his last Sunday, last Sunday. So instead of a sermon, I interviewed him about his calling and about what he was going to be doing next. And so that's what I did and did that in Zoom. So you can see that there's a screenshot from the interview that I gave. So that's another way of doing it as well, is to record everything in Zoom and then, and then you can either just upload the whole I wouldn't probably just upload the video straight to YouTube I'll probably edit it a little bit first and then upload it uh, to YouTube or Facebook or wherever you keep your videos online um so once you've got all your video bits so I've recorded all the little sections of my service using OBS I then edit my video and put everything together all the recordings of the readings and the prayers and all those different things people have sent me I edit all of that using something called Sony Vegas, which is quite an expensive piece of software that was very generously given to me by somebody. Um, so I use Sony Vegas, which is quite a sophisticated bit of software. You can see from the screenshot, it looks a bit complex what I've done there, um, but it is quite a clever, powerful tool. But um, as I said earlier, um, all Macs have iMovie built in and PCs should have Windows Movie Maker built in or you can use free software OpenShot um, to edit your video and then you can kind of move all your bits around um, and get it to the point that you want it. So what do I offer in terms of my um, weekly offer for worship? Um, well on every Sunday um, the pre-recorded service is ready on YouTube from 8am for people to watch whatever time suits them and I share the link to that YouTube video on Facebook. Um, I used to upload it to both Facebook and YouTube and we used to watch the video using Facebook watch party but I had a few weeks where it was really glitchy and wasn't working very well and I decided to keep it simple and just say the service is on YouTube just watch it on there. It just made life a lot easier. The benefit that we were getting was sort of outweighed by the glitches. So I just simplified it. So each Sunday um, I do live notices on Facebook uh, just to say hi to everyone so they can see my face. And that's live and a bit more kind of edgy. And then we watch the pre-recorded service together on YouTube. Every Tuesday I do a Facebook live service using OBS Studio that I've explained today. Um, and I record that at the same time and then I upload the recording afterwards to YouTube. Every Thursday now, um, because there are quite a few people in my congregations who don't have internet at all, I started to do a, a church, simple church service completely over the phone using something called YPay, which is free telephone conferencing system. It's absolutely brilliant. They just give you the phone number and the room number and off you go. Um, so I, every Thursday we do a phone church service Every weekday I do a prayer podcast using the Anchor 
uh, app on my mobile phone and every week I upload a new sermon to my website and to Twilio so that people can dial in and listen to the sermon. Of course we're just about thinking about returning to our churches for gathered worship in our buildings so what am I going to stop doing? There's only one thing that I'm going to stop doing once we're back in church on a Sunday and that is the pre-recorded service that I've been producing on YouTube because they take quite a lot of time and effort to produce. But I'm going to keep all the other things so that there will always be something that people can access regardless of whether they're online or not um, and whether they feel safe or not coming to church. There's going to be something for everybody. Um, so I'll carry on with the Tuesday Facebook live service, I'll carry on with the Thursday morning phone church, I'll carry on with the prayer podcast and I'll carry on with Dyla Sermon. So really what I've learned during this period is that um, inclusivity is kind of the way forwards really. We should have always been doing all this inclusive stuff and I'm hoping that we can keep going with all of that. You might have been watching that and thinking, oh my goodness, how on earth could I do all of that? Well, I've, I've put detailed guides on how to do all of those things and more on my blog. So if you go to brianietaylor.com, you'll see along the top of the screen, there's, a, there's a, a, a link that says coronavirus help. If you click on that, you'll find articles and, and videos and stuff and guidance on how to do all of those things I've talked about. Um, and I learned all of this as I went along. <laughs> Um, YouTube's always a good place to get advice. I've, I've been using YouTube a lot to kind of learn how to do stuff. That's where I started. None of the things that I've done are particularly expensive or that technical. Um, I'm only one step ahead of you, really. Um, and all I would say is just start small and work your way up and uh, you'll get there in the end. <laughs>